Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Mikola Mojivenko, and I'm lead uh, platform three at Adobe at Cloud Divisor, Division, and we do run OpenStack. So, uh, let's talk about upgrades, because upgrades are like, it's something that a lot of people are afraid of, because uh, you can't easily switch and do exactly and upgrade the OpenStack installation, especially if you're not run, 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 running multi-easy deployment. And every, like, every, every forum, every OpenStack forum, people are uh, discussing like, challenges that they, they faced. So not, n n not every upgrade is like, the same. They're all different based on your deployment type, based on your, your customization, and based you know, on business, or type of business you're doing. So let's talk why do we need it and what they like, aim to solve upgrades. First of all, like, uh, the key motiva motivating factors for any upgrade should be, like, uh, let's say, performance, uh, security, and some like, key features that you miss. So, and for us, at some point, years ago, the key, the key motivating factor was like that, that release that we used was, not alre was already not supported by the upstream like, community. It was end of Y release. And whenever we need something new, or we had to patch something, so we had to do it by our own, without help of the community. So another uh, uh, like significant improvement was like operating system upgrade. So imagine that today you install a new operating system and replace your two years or three years old with a new kernel, new functionality, and of course, you upgrade an OpenStack, so OpenStack as well, new release provides you more functionality and more features that you missed. So, and as well, like based on the last two years of experience, it's any upgrade, and mostly like any major upgrade, it solves a lot of vulnerability issues. So there are like mostly like two main like uh, two main like uh, strategies to upgrade your OpenStack. One of the popular rolling upgrades, and so it means that you are upgrading uh, your OpenStack environment one by one, step by step. And in place rolling upgrades uh, requires like uh, to shut down your services, so your, your OpenStack components, which is not always acceptable for people. While like side by side can all you to minimize the downtime, the possible, possible downtime. So from my personal opinion, uh, everyone will find his own pros and cons for any type of upgrade. So it's, uh, like, uh, it's based on your current situation, on, uh, on your current specific. But in our case, I, see, I do see that like, uh, rolling upgrades are the fastest way to do any upgrade, because you're basically not relying on anyone else except on yourself, like OpenStack operators. Uh, and there is, no, there is like another like, good, good like, uh, ability uh, that it's not always required before the upgrade to migrate your resources, like VM. If you can afford VM downtime for like a couple of minutes, so you can do it like without migrating your resources, which is another like uh, key issue for some people because they limited in capacity or there is no room to, to do a live migration or no ability to do it. But cons, I mean like that's probably mostly what prevented us to do it this time. It's like service interruption. Imagine a situation when you have like a high traffic. I mean, I'm, say, I'm saying like gigabits of traffic, like 50 gigabits, and you can't, can't stop it. So you, you can stop it, but you will lose your business. So sometimes, so you need to choose between two evils. What you, what you will choose, choose you to lose your business for some period of time, or, you, or like try to figure out like any other solution, any, way, any, any other like way to upgrade, to upgrade it. And most, like, and maybe the most complex uh, upgrade, it's because of DB migrations. Uh, and like, yeah, so downtime is key, 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 key like, a blocker for us in this case. And like, uh, complexity as well. So components, like, it's, if you were trying to upgrade something like five years old to something like up to date, so you will always like have some challenges because compatibility and like uh, uh, co complexity because every every OpenStack deployment is different. Parallel deployment. This way allows you basically to not touch existing OpenStack uh, installation. So basically, imagine that you have a data center 
and the same physical equipment, but what you're trying to do, just basically you deploy another OpenStack uh, like installation alongside with the, the old one. And this way of upgrading OpenStack is the simplest one because you're not scared about like uh, mess up with like DB or any other configuration because your existing hardware is hosting like your existing workloads and you're not, not touching it. So this method allows you basically to do like uh, upgrade without service interruption. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, you're not stopping Keystone. You're not stopping metadata, for example. So basically, everything is available for you. You're just trying to like create an, another release and trying to migrate workloads from an uh, old installation to a new one. Yeah, it's kind of hard because you, f for this method, you need like, uh, to have like, extra hardware, which is not used, so that you can leverage for your new OpenStack installation. And you still, like, downtime could be different because in this case, you're basically trying to migrate resources, which is not easily doable, doable like, as a live migration. So you're basically stopping something somewhere, and then you start it again in a new place. And the, the, probably the biggest disadvantage is that you're relying on end users. You need their help to move, help you like, to move those like, workloads. And also, uh, it takes too much time. So, Canary re releases. So imagine that with your application, when you have clusters, and you do Canary re releases for your application, and you want you to do the same for OpenStack, because uh, all your synthetic tests, all your tests that you do in your, in your lab, it's not showing you real situation with real workloads and with like uh, real applications. So at some point, after v validating like your, your OpenStack release somewhere in the lab, you wanted to see how it behaves like uh, with the same workloads and prod. So you do kind of release. It's pretty much like exciting because you, you basically run into OpenStack installation, which helps you to measure performance between two. And you decide, is it worth it to upgrade or not? So the simple workflow is just, like, well, you can deploy an all-in-one node, yeah? But, but the best way is to deploy a controller and compute, interconnect networks because application is communicate sometimes some type of applications. You need to communication with some dependencies. And you start in VM with production application, and it talks with dependencies or other services. And you see how it behaves. If you're satisfied with the results, you proceed. So you, your basic kernel release can evolve. If you, do, if you do it right from the beginning, like a separate controller, a networking node, and compute, for example, it can evolve into a completely new installation. So you can add HA later. So at some point, it will look like that. One cloud, like it looks like one for your customers, but indeed it's two, two, three, or more, depending on what you need. So uh, Adobe, it, at, at cloud, we choose this way because it, uh, at that time, we, we were not able to afford any downtime. So, and Basically, this year, we did upgrade from Icehouse to, to Mythica release. Like, the longest time was one month to migrate all workloads. And there is no impact on your like, open stack. It's available. Because, for example, imagine a situation when you're trying to do rolling upgrade and you're stopping metadata service, and you do like, orchestration with Puppet, and Puppet relied on your metadata facts. When uh, facts, it's not working, so, Puppet just can easily like wipe with zeros your configuration and restart an application. So it's not the best situation ever. And those upgrades, uh, like parallel deployment, installation, all with us uh, to not stop the traffic, huge amount of traffic. And we didn't do any changes to the control plane. For, end, for our end customer, it looked like, so we just like stopped some amount of applications, not all of them, not all stacks, and migrated one by one. It was hard because you don't have extra, you don't plan for extra equipment in particular DC. You basically use taking one hypervisor, migrating workloads. When it's done, you reinstall or plugging it back to the new installation. So it's kind of tricky. So, but the big bang in this journey that you can use this technique to kind of release us. You basically can use it. Uh, for your own evidence and to provide some like uh, uh, strong arguments to stakeholders and explain why do you need particular upgrade, what benefits are. 
So what, what is performance? So you can basically perform on the fly performance of two installations. I guess I'm done. That's it. Thanks for attending. <laughs>